Hey everyone, let's go over section 5.5, integration by substitution. Um, so this is a pretty important section because it's going to allow us to integrate a lot more things than what we've been able to do so far. Uh, so let's start with example one, evaluate each integral. Okay, easy enough. Uh, so the x squared becomes one third x to the third plus c because it's an indefinite integral. Okay, part b, x to the third plus c, not bad. Integrate 2x minus 1 to the seventh power. Um, shoot. The only way we know how to do this is to expand that out. I really don't want to do that. Um, so there has to be a better way than multiplying that thing out and then finding the integral. Because um, that'd be really nice if we didn't have to. Well, there is a way that we don't have to expand this out. Uh, so integrals like this example, you can evaluate them using substitution. Um, and that method is a lot like what we did for uh, when we introduced the chain rule for derivatives. So essentially that's kind of what we're doing is we're just for sort of reversing uh, derivatives that were found using the chain rule. Uh, so let's review what that was just pretty quick. So if y equals f of x is a differentiable function of u, and u equals g of x is a differentiable function of x, then y equals f of g of x is also differentiable of x, and the derivative of f of g of x, so that composite function, is f prime of g of x, times g prime of x. Uh, or if you did that substitution and got it in terms of u, it is f prime of u times g of u. So we would take a function and go, okay, u equals da 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 da, and then we would switch everything around so the function's variable became u instead of x, and then we did the derivative, and so on and so forth. So now we're just gonna kinda reverse that little process. So the anti-differentiation of a composite function, or in much simpler terms, a u sub. So let g be a function whose range is an interval i, and let f be a function that is continuous on i. Okay, if g is differentiable on its own domain and f, capital F, is an antiderivative of little f, then if we integrated f prime of g of x times g prime of, of x, what do you think we're going to get? We're basically integrating this, so we're going backwards. So if we integrated this, we should get what the original function was f of g of x and then that plus c. So letting u equal g of x gives du equals g prime of x dx. So now we're, we've taken this thing and we've switched it all into terms of u. So if we did f prime of u du, if we integrate that, that would just be f of u plus c. And I know it's tough to look at when it's just like all theorems and, and generalized terms, uh, but we're gonna do several examples just so you can see uh, how everything is gonna work. So that was the general stuff, so now let's get into the specifics. So use substitution to answer both parts. Okay, so find the derivative of f of x equals 1 8th times 2x minus 1 uh, to the 8th. So when we did substitution, uh, and I know you guys can do this without it, um, but just for the point, if we did substitution, 
and we had to choose something for the u, and typically it was the stuff that was inside. So like 2x minus 1. And then right after that, you found its derivative. And then you substituted. You got the function in terms of u instead of x. So the 2x minus 1 becomes u. And then we could find its derivative. So that would be u to the seventh, but then we had to multiply by that u prime. So two u to the seventh. And you didn't stop there. Once you took its derivative after that u substitution, then you had to reverse it. You had to get everything back in terms of x. So 2 times 2x minus 1 to the 7th. Okay, so that's how it worked with derivatives. Now let's see how it's going to work with integrals. And it's kind of the same sort of deal. Uh, when you're looking in here, um, and you're trying to use a u substitution or a u sub, the, the rules and techniques that you did for derivatives are pretty much the same for integrals. So we're going to let u equal the stuff that was on the inside. So the 2x minus 1. And I'm still going to find its derivative. But I'm going to use a different notation with this. So u prime, instead of u prime, I'm going to write it as du dx. And I'm going to get the du by itself. So this dx, I'm going to multiply it over to the right. So I have du is equal to 2dx. So what you're going to do is now you're going to get your integrand. You're going to switch it all out in terms of u. And you have to switch all of it out that applies. So the u becomes, or the, sorry, the 2x minus 1 becomes u. Well, the 2dx, you have 2dx right here. What is What does it equal? It equals du, so that 2dx becomes du. So when you replace all or your variables and you get them in terms of u, it's everything that's over here, but it also has to be the dx. Otherwise, your variables don't match. You can't have u and a dx in there. It all has to be u's. The variables must match. Okay, so then just integrate this. 1 8th u to the 8th plus c. And then just like before, reverse your substitution. Get it back to your original variable, which was x. So 1 8th times 2x minus 1 to the 8th plus c. So essentially, we got right back to where we started. And we should have, because if you notice, what we were integrating was your answer uh, from part a. All right, so that's essentially how u subs are going to work. So we're going to try a lot more examples, uh, but we're going to do those in the following videos.